Hello aviators, you're joining with the Aero Technicians YouTube channel. It's the morning before Christmas, so just taking it easy and I hope you're all doing well and getting ready for Christmas. So I thought of bringing you a video which has been a question from all. Uh, what's the difference between aircraft engineering and aeronautical engineering? So. I thought of putting up a video taking into consideration factors like uh, things that you need to become an aircraft or an aeronautical engineering and the demands so so I've, I've compiled a video so without further ado let's get to the video So the real difference between an aircraft and aeronautical engineer or engineering. If we bring summarize these two engineering fields into one small thing, the basic thing is it's the engineering or it's the principles of the aircraft. But these are two different fields and what is this different to be exact? So if we put it to the layman's terms, if you take a car, everybody's familiar with cars. So if you take a car, there are car companies like Ferrari, BMW, Mazda. I mean, there's a lot. So what does these companies do? These companies, they actually build a car from the scratch. They design it, they test it in aerodynamics. They check for crashworthiness, like how a passenger would feel in a crash and like, or what, how the safety of the passenger, the design, the material, there's loads of things. And after they design that, the car comes out to the public and the public use it. While using it, you might need to change its filter or maybe, you know, put some coolant in it, like a tire change, a seat change, interior, interior problem. So you take it to a service center now this service center, they what they do is they are authorized by this car company to do maintenance on the car. So what they do is they actually take off the filters, change the filters and they do these repairs, minor repairs, major repairs, wheel changes, wheel alignments. These things are done in those service center for an example quick fit or oh, just small mechanic shops you can find along the road. So. This, this is the basic difference between an aeronautical and an aircraft engineer. An aeronautical engineer or engineering deals with the designing and the propulsion of the aircraft. But on the other hand, aircraft maintenance, they are servicing the aircraft given the authorities given by that company to service the aircraft. Like back in my last company, we were a uh, de Havilland service center. So we were allowed to work on uh, the uh, de Havilland aircrafts, Q400s, Q100s, and we were a service center. It's the same thing. Now let's get to the differences between the other factors. Like I, I want to bring at number one is cooling. Now when it comes to aircraft engineering, there are two types of schools, which is 147 and part 66 modular courses. The difference it's a difference between the, um, the main difference is it is authorized by the civil aviation. It's an approved course. While the part 66 modular course is not governed by the civil aviation of that country. So it is not, uh, I mean, they train you to become an aircraft engineer, but the process is longer. When it comes to aeronautical or aerospace engineering, it's uh, university studies. There are some instances where an HND, uh, there are HND courses where you can do and then come come into aeronautical engineering, but at the end, you need to have a university qualification. Coming at number two is external examinations and qualifications for this. Do we need any external examinations or qualifications? If we talk about aircraft engineering, yes, we do. There are modules, uh, we have to, certain number of modules. Um, if, it if it is mechanical, you have to have 13, EASA or whatever your governing body is, you need the modules, aircraft maintenance modules to be completed. These are external exams. But if you're 147, they're given at your facility. 
but when it comes to aeronautical engineering there's nothing uh, external you have to take if you study in a university you study it but the only extras you will have to do is going into webinars or seminars like stuff like this just to Im improve your knowledge and career talks those are the only things you'll get in a university which means you don't have any extra expenses when it comes to the university so the next question number three is time to become an engineer well, how, what's the duration to become an engineer after schooling so usually an aircraft engineer or when, when he comes out of a school he starts as an um, an aircraft mechanic or an aircraft technician this depends on company to company some companies aircraft mechanic and technician is one level but the company's aircraft mechanics are at a lower level than an aircraft technician so they have to work for five or three years depending on the school if it is a part 66 modular course you have to have got to have five years of experience to become an engineer and if you wanna if you're on a 147 you just need three years or less to become an aircraft engineer now if you're wondering uh to become an aircraft engineer i'll put down a link which explains everything uh step by step how to become an aircraft engineer and next thing is aeronautical engineering so when you graduate from a university you have this uh, title as an engineer you start as a graduate engineer and then you work your way up usually there are uh, accredited bodies who who does uh, give ex accreditations for your experience and qualifications like incorporated engineering status or a chartered status so with these with uh, levels you'll go up uh, the hierarchy so you start as a graduate engineer then you'll be a level one engineer maybe you go back level two engineer and professional professional two it goes higher so this is like you start here as an engineer but when it comes to aircraft you start as a mechanic or a technician so next thing is the progression in career so you start as a mechanic or a technician in aircraft engineering and then you walk your way up you become an aircraft engineer after three or five years and then you can after three years or if you have a degree a technical degree you can apply for this cat c position cat c position is like he's higher than the b1 he take care of he can sign off the whole aircraft where and um, cat b 1.1 or an aircraft engineer can sign part of the aircraft so this is the difference so he acts like a chief engineer when it can compare to an en aircraft engineer so when you have if you have a degree with your license this you can just uh, pass your documents into your civil aviation and get your cat c position as well given that you need to have six month experience in the job role and then after that after being a cat c you can uh, you know escalate yourself to a management position uh, if you have an MBA masters in business administration or some companies does it by the experience as well and when it comes to aeronautical engineering as I said it's levels if you are incorporated engineer I eng you have a certain level in the company that you can go up to and if you want to surpass this level you need to have a chartered engineering status so the next one where do they work where do aircraft engineers work where do aeronautical engineers work they do work in air, aircraft engineers do work in airlines or part 145 organizations there are part 145 organizations which are not airlines they do third party aircraft and within this 145 there are different other departments or functions uh, where quality comes in safety and then a camo so you can actually go towards like to go and work in these functions so it's a vast area you can just be a quality manager or a quality engineer you can be an aircraft engineer you can be a planning engineer so you got a bit of a choice and aeronautical engineers they work in different fields I mean if, if an aeronautical comes out and he starts working in 
companies like Rolls Royce, GE, they pro they more prone to go towards propulsion. So they they become propulsion engineers, and there are aircraft ma material companies. So they used to work out the materials used in the aircraft, so they can go to material side, thermal. Um, thermal engineers as well as structural engineers design engineers aerodynamics engineers support engineers testing engineers so that's a lot so when it comes to aeronautical engineering it it's not what it's not many things in one company it's many different companies that you can go work for and the next thing the most important question out of all is like the demand i mean where if you if you just if you just search on uh, Google, it would say could reach as much as 754,000 over the next 20 years. So this pie chart, I got it from uh, the internet as well. So it shows uh, for the next few years, there can be significant demand for aircraft engineers. But when it comes to aeronautical engineers, I couldn't find much, and but it shows 6% of uh, global demand for aeronautical engineers as well. So this brings to an end, uh, but if you really want to know how to become an aeronautical engineer, uh, or how to become an aircraft engineer, I'll put them put the links up there. And again, if you want to know how to, uh, what are the salary differences between this aeronautical engineer and aircraft engineering, I'll put them up there as well. So, so if you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section below, like my videos and if you subscribe to my video, you'll get more and I'll be happy. So press that subscribe button and share the knowledge. Uh, you can reach me out on Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn as well. So please do check all the social media platforms. I'm trying to bring more videos. I'm trying to mix things up with other engineering firms and things are coming up. So make sure that you press the bell icon and you you know you make yourself ready for the videos as well so as always keep fixing and have a good christmas bye bye